Tell the Lord, say, no, not yet. Don't teach the presence and the glory of God until you've taught fatherhood and the love of God. And then, as I began to seek God about that, I felt the Lord say, it's impossible to teach or preach the love of God unless you've had an encounter. Because actually you can't understand the love of God. I, I want to ask you, I want to dare you, ask God, the Father, the following question. In all sincerity, ask him this question. Ask him tonight as you're lying there. Why do you love me? And he'll not tell you. He'll just, at the most, the response you will get will be, because I do. And if you spend the next 20 trillion gazillion years in eternity, and you say, Father, why do you love me? He said, because I do. He'll never really give you an answer. And really it will settle a peace on the inside of you. <laughs> because you can't understand the love of God. And the funny thing is, as I began to prepare for this series on the love of God, I did, oh, well, let's see what great works of theology or great Christian books have been written on the love of God, the love of the Father. And I know there's one called, by a man called Floyd McClung, yeah. on the Father Heart of God. I think I read that years ago. It's a great book. Well, there's not actually a lot out there. But one, I had, a, I had almost laughed because it was a thesis on the love of God. And the people who reviewed it said this was a great intellectual work on the love of God. Completely lost the point. Because you can't actually understand the love of God. And we'll come to why. Now, to, today, this morning, might raise a few questions. In a good way. But I would say stick with this by the grace of God over the next few Sundays. Okay? Now, number one, we need to recognize that there are different types of love. In English, there's only one word for love. Love. In New Testament Greek, there are four. There are four words for love. And God's kind of love is a distinct type of love. The four loves are this. There's the word filial, which means brotherly love between close friends. Filial. Filial love. Okay? The city of Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Okay? Filial is love between close friends. Stoge is love within a family. Uh, parents for children. Children for parents, aunties, uncles, cousins, etc. Eros love is romantic love between a husband and wife, as God designed it, as we know in the world it's out of control. Well, then there's a fourth kind of love, and that's the love of God, and that is agape. Agape is the God kind of love, and it's a distinct love from all of the others. All of the other loves, none of them are as pure as the God kind of love. The agape love of God is completely unselfish. It is completely pure. It is eternal. It is supernatural. The God kind of love. Now I want to ask you this. What is the most famous verse of scripture in the, New T in the Bible? Right, we have some Christians here. That's great. <laughs> right, let's say it like we mean it. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There you go. There's a famous verse that defines the love of the Father. Okay, now what can we see? If you were to define um, filial love, you could say these friends love each other. Well, there's going to be conditions. Okay? Even in family love, there's conditions. If anybody knows anything about families, families can 
fall apart, fall out with each other? Have you ever been to family occasions where all scores get settled? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the police got called. The police get called, yeah. All, all, all family occasions, and this relative hasn't seen that relative for some time. And a, a few beers later, and then there's a, a kerfuffle in the, in the bar, and there's ashtrays flying, and well, the the bar, so I'm from the northeast, so. <laughs> so all of these loves are imperfect but what can we say even in John 3 16 on the love of God what does God's love God the Father for God so loved the world that he gave he gave he gave the love of God number one always gives can I ask you this does God's love change is there any shadow of turning with God so if you've been saved for five minutes or you've been saved for 20 years, has God's kind of love changed for you? No. Is it, well, you've been saved for five years, I'm not going to give you anymore. No. I'm not a given love anymore. You're going to have to earn it now because you've been a Christian for five years. Now, yes, we could open up and explore the doctrine of sanctification and get that. I believe in sanctification. But God's love is still God's love. And it's, it's unchanging. It gives. What did he give? His only. Don't. There's a word. Don't miss it out. His only. A God and son. Did he think. Well I'll give an angel. Hey those human beings are in trouble. Gabriel I'm sending you down. Michael on your way. No. Not up to the job. He gave. And now in the Greek. Only begotten means his sole son. He didn't have anybody else. His only Son. Now there's a mystery right there in the heart of the Trinity. God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son have been in relationship for all eternity. And the Father, the Father has been loving the Son in the Spirit for all eternity. The Father's been pouring His love into the Son through the Spirit for all eternity. And the Son's been pouring His love into the Father in the Spirit for all eternity. Yeah. fully God we need to be confident our God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit we're not going to bow to political pressure and go oh well, well I can't say that because I'll offend people of other faiths we love them, our God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit and so he gave his only son how precious think, think how precious and how dear is his only son could you mark it on a scale it's, it's just, it fathoms belief. The, the preciousness of the gift that the Father gave. Did he give it to people who were, who were deserving? No. It, it says in, in Romans, in Romans 8, 31 to 32, it says, What then shall we say, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his only son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? There you go. God is always giving. God is not selfish. There's nothing selfish about him. No, there's, there's no hint of self-centeredness in God. God is always thinking of others. He's always thinking and feeling about the welfare and the good of you. And of others. That's the Father's type of love. Because we have to we have to discern different types of love. There's filial love, scrosia love, eros love. You've been brought up in a family with an earthly father. Even the best stoge love is not doesn't come close to the love of the Father, to the love of the Heavenly Father. And can I say this? The, the purpose of an earthly father is to be an extension of the heavenly father into the home. Now we know that's painful for many people because we didn't have an ideal father or we didn't have a father at all. And if you're watching this, anybody here who's a single parent, there's a grace. There's a grace in the presence of God for the fatherhood of God to be in your home. We need the fatherhood of God. Here's another Revelation from John 3.16 about the fatherhood of God. 
Wherever the love of the Father manifests, there is life. You see that? Wherever there's an absence of the manifestation of the love of the Father, there's a perishing. Wherever the Father's love is demonstrated in the Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit, things come alive. Things come alive. Things come alive in your mind. Your, your heart comes alive. Your life comes alive. Mm. Perishing ceases. Disease goes. Sickness goes. Oppression goes. The love of God is always creating life. It's always expanding. It's always healing. It's always giving. It's always giving. How could? I just stop and think this. Jesus said, pray this on earth as it is in heaven. Is there any oppression in heaven? No. Is there any sickness or disease in heaven? No. So that's his will. Heaven is his will. And God's love brings heaven down. So whatever the love of God is received, and this is the tricky part because we struggle to believe it. But when we stop trying to understand it, we get an experience of the love of the Father, we start to receive. We've got to be receivers. And so he says, he didn't spare his only son. If he's going to give, if, if God is going to give this indescribable, and this is the Father's love, he'll do anything for you. I feel, but I don't deserve it. You never did. And this is what changes the heart. It changes our heart from being self-centered to being full of gratitude. Full of wonder, full of worship, full of thanksgiving. But here, I want to look at another quality of the love of God. This is so powerful. I don't think you will have heard this. This is powerful. The nature and the quality of the love of the Father. Romans 5, verse 6 says, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. So it's not our place to judge them. Now we know, we have discernment, the, the way the world is behaving, the immorality, the impurity, we're to not be part of it, but we don't judge the people, we're not fighting flesh and blood. Christ died for the ungodly. We were the ungodly. Amen. Hallelujah, is this Michael okay? We were the ungodly. Verse 8, this is powerful. But God, the Father, Demonstrate, say demonstrates. Demonstrate. So if you want to say to God, okay God, I, there's these four different types of love. Give me a demonstration of your type of love. Say God's type of love. I want a demonstration of God's kind of love. Yeah, we've been in the world and we've had a demonstration of other types of love. And it's great to a point. But you know this, like... You take you're like young ladies in the world who are looking for acceptance. A guy will show them acceptance and she'll get into bed with him because she feels accepted by him. And then she gets rejected later and the whole world falls apart. Now, are young people looking for acceptance in all the wrong places and this person over here shows them some acceptance and then later on rejects them and they're destroyed. They're, they're, they're torn down. They're, they're traumatized. People are destroyed. But the love of God, that, and that's, that's like, well, show me a demonstration of the world's love. There it is right there. A demonstration of the world's love. No, thank you. I don't want a demonstration. I think we've had enough of a demonstration of the world's type of love of you. Amen, yeah. Even in our families, in our homes, in our marriages, I need the God kind of love because it changes my heart and I can then be transformed by an encounter with this love and I can start loving others with that quality of love. I can love my wife and love my kids and have a home that's possessed with the love of God. Have children that are growing up in the love of God. So there's an absence of fear in the home and insecurity and doubt. Well, let's look at God's demonstration of love. He demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now we've read this before. And there's something very obvious in this verse of scripture that I've never seen before. This is something about the love of God. Now does God's love change? 
no change to it. I mean, it gets stronger, more intense as you experience it, but it's the same love. Listen to this. This is a quality of the nature of the love of the Father. The love of the Father plans in advance how he will serve you. I just don't think that, I don't think, you, I think we need to repeat that. <laughs> the nature and the type of the love, God's love, the love of the Father looks ahead and plans in advance how he's going to love you, how he's going to heal you, how he's going to deliver you, how he's going to serve you. Some of us will have a problem. God served me. I'm not saying God worshipped me. God forbid. Or me be a little God. No. But Jesus said, look, if I don't wash your feet, you've got no part of me. You've got to learn to receive. You've got to become a receiver. In the place of the son, as a son, as a daughter, you are. You just are a son. Why am I your son? Why am I your daughter? Because you are. It's because you are. But why? Because you are. Okay, try again. Ten trillion years later. Because you are. And then, okay, I am. I am a son. I am a daughter. Hallelujah. He saved me. Now his measure and kind of love is he plans in advance. He knows what you're going to need next week, next month, next year. And he's already decided how he's going to love you in that situation. But you can't work this out. You have to experience his love. He's made a full provision. While you were ungodly, he made full provision and planned for your salvation. And this type of love never changes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a beautiful example of how God loves you and serves you. It says in 1 Peter 5, 7. This is casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your care upon him, because he cares for you. The word care appears twice. In New Testament Greek, they're completely different words. The first word, care, means anxiety and fear. So God's word says, take your anxiety and fear and throw it at the foot of the cross. And then he says, because he cares for you. And that word care means to actively shepherd and serve you. Because God's love, before you even have a need, he's made provision for it. And what stops you from receiving it is you remaining in control and being anxious and being fearful. Now, one of this, listen, God is Father. This is the Father's love. A Father, by definition, as we heard in the song, one of the definitions for Father is a life source. A Father is a progenitor. In Hebrew and Greek, the word Father means progenitor or originator. It, a, a Father of a whole tribe or people group i.e. Abraham. God the Father is progenitor. Is This is where your identity and your origin comes from. Father means somebody who provides for you, protects you, supplies all your needs, gives you identity and endorses you and affirms you. God revealed himself to Israel as Yahweh, as I am. That means the God who always was, always will be, always is. And, and, and God, by definition, has no need of sustenance. 
He doesn't need anybody to meet his need because he's God. If anybody had to help God out, then he'd no longer be God. Within God is all of the resources, everything is in God able to sustain his own creation. How much more his beloved blood bought sons and daughters? Because if he didn't, he wouldn't be a father. He's father. And so as a father, he has everything you need. You don't need a formula. You need a relationship. You need, listen, you need a revelation of your father. And when you get that revelation of your father, your confidence level is going to come from the floor and it's going to go, because that's your father. You may not have had an earthly father. Your father may, your earthly father may have rejected you. You may have had a bad family background. Goodness, there's people, their earthly father was a, was a rapist. Devastating stuff. But when you have an encounter with your heavenly father, because you've been born from above, your origin, my origin is no longer 1974, the year I was born. Your origin is not the old. Your origin is now in the Heavenly Father. And His type of love plans everything in advance for you. To care for you and to serve you. Because you couldn't save yourself. And guess what? You still can't. You still can't save yourself. Hallelujah. And Christian maturity and I believe in sanctification and walking in holiness and the fear of God Christian maturity is actually growing to become perfect in love Bible says those who fear those who are anxious are not yet perfect in love the word perfect means mature maturity in the Christian life is maturity in the love of the Father when you become mature in the love of the Father. Like there's people watching today, maybe here, very common area of sin. And I'm, I'll mention it often in church. I don't know why the, ch the contemporary church never mentions this. People today lack self control in sex, feel very ashamed of themselves for it. And they make big resolutions on how to change. I'll never do it again. You've not been perfected yet in the love of the Father. Because the love of the Father will give the fruit of the spirit of self-control in your life. Not bondage, not fear, the fruit of the spirit of self-control as a man and as a woman. Because you get your identity restored. You get your dignity restored. Hallelujah. I'm praying, I'm declaring sons and daughters in this house, this gets better. This is going to get better. This gets better. Hallelujah. Say better. Better. Now listen, you can't understand with your head the love of the Father. People can write a thesis on it. People can write a dissertation on it. Somebody could go to a seminary for three, go to a, a seminary for three years and come out and not have a clue about God. Loads of people, listen, people can go to Pentecostal Bible schools these days and come out and they, not, there's nothing there. The lights are on, but there's nobody home. Yeah. Because people, this, you only grow in the Lord by having an encounter with God, by having, by having your heart transformed. Heart transformation is where we change. So we need an encounter with the love of the Father. You've got to encounter it. Now, we need a thirst and hunger for his presence in the Holy Spirit. We're here on Friday night. God's church in, in the end times is a church of the presence. And I want to say this. We need the revelation of the love of the Father or the things that are coming. I'm not doom and gloom. But there are challenging times coming upon this world even more. The sh the sh there are more shakings to come. There are more shakings to come. Before Christ comes to snatch his church. 
We need the love of God. We need the love of God because there's a coming persecution on the global church so that we can love our enemies and pray for them. We need the love of God. We need the love of God for our faith to work properly and believe God. When you know God loves you, with this type of love, you can believe Him for anything. You can, you're so bold. Listen, if your belief in God for things is based on how much you pray and fast, and I believe in praying and fasting, if your receiving from God is based on that, well, that one day when you sleep in and ne neglect prayer, your whole world's going to fall apart. It's got to be built on the love of God. It's everything is His initiative. We love Him because we're great. We love Him because we score great. We've got our own righteousness. We can pat ourselves on the back. No, we love Him because He first loved us. Amen. So we need an encounter with the love of the Father. We need a bit. Of, we've looked at this to have an encounter with the love of the Father. You got to just. Throw your anxiety on him. Throw your care upon him. Your kids. Worried about your kids? Give them to God. Give them to God. This is one. Okay. Praise God. Lord help me. Many people need their heart healing. You'd be disappointed by life. I meet people all the time and you can see how they're, 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 you can see it in their face. They're kind of weather beaten by life. They're getting on. And I, I, I'll be evangelizing on the streets and I'll, I'll maybe meet a lady in her 50s and she's weather beaten by life. You can see the grief in her face. And I imagine, sometimes when I meet a lady like that, I imagine what was the 16, 17, 17 year old version of that lady like? The 15 year old. The young lady who wanted to be a princess and meet a Prince Charming, who would just love her. And she got her heart broken several times. And she struggles to get by and she cleans offices every morning and every evening and doesn't make it. She just barely makes enough money to get by. And her heart is sick. She's disappointed. And as many people in the church are, they carry disappointment. Because Disappointment comes because life hasn't worked out the way you hoped it would. Because your desire was fixed on something. Your desire and your affection was fixed on something and it didn't work out. And God wants you to have good things, okay? We're not serving a mean God. We're not serving a mean God who's got a big stick and said, Well, I did that to you to teach you a lesson. You little worm, you. No, that's not God. But here's the healing of the heart. Because when the affection and the desire of your heart gets touched by the love of the Father, when you think, oh, for the heaven of it, I don't care. My main joy in life, my main goal and achievement in life is to be his son. It's to be his daughter. My main goal and achievement in life is to enjoy God. <laughs> That's what I'm aiming for. What you, what's your ambition in life? To know a Father. Yeah. <laughs> to know Jesus. To know the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't need to go to cemetery for that. I just need to encounter Him every day. My main goal in life is to just know Him. And be His friend. It just lights you up thinking about it. And guess what? You'll never be disappointed. Because the love of God will be shed abroad in your heart through the Holy Spirit. You'll never be disappointed when your main desire. I mean, let's face it. Who finds loving God and, well, get it in the right order. Who finds being loved by God and then being free to love God is, quite frankly, the most happiest thing in the whole of <laughs> existence. Yeah. Like, listen, imagine being really rich and loaded. And I pray in the name of Jesus in his will, you will be. But as a Christian, 
and you're going to heaven. I heard someone share this with my, my, our apostle shared this. He said, you know you're in faith. Listen, he says, you know you're in faith when you do things that give you a sense of satisfaction on the inside. Because faith pleases God. Because as a Christian, who wants to, who just loves to please God here? You love to please God. It's like something in you is going, Dad, I want to make you proud. I want to make you proud. Something on the inside of you goes, Dad, Father, I just want to make you proud. Like a little kid comes home full of snot, full of chocolate all over the house. Just ah, ah, like that. And you go, no. I just want to make you proud. I just want to please you. When you do things in life that come from faith, and, and look, when, when you get that house paid off, and you get that new job, and it was by faith, it carries a sense of satisfaction. But when you get things, as a Christian, you could get things and you don't feel satisfied. Because that wasn't by faith. When the main goal of your life is just to love, be loved by God, and love God, you'll never be disappointed. You'll be in absolute abundance. And guess what? All of that other stuff is going to come your way. Everything else will be added to you. Because I enjoy God. Because I'm established in the love of God. And my heart is no longer sick. My heart is now Healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And here's the spiritual law. You reproduce what you are. Let me just sell that pause and think on that. When your heart is healed, full of gratitude, full of the love of the Father, and you, you, you don't hate yourself, you don't think, I'm a worm and I'm a nobody. I'm not arrogant, but I'm a son of God. I can look at myself in the mirror. I'm not ashamed. Well, what you re reproduce in your life then is good stuff. So God is healing your heart today. And let's, let's finish with this. This is so powerful. Ephesians 3.19 says, To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now I said to the Lord, Why, why do you say there the love of Christ? Yes, Christ loves me. He died for me. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. So it's the same. It's the God love of me. It's the love of Christ. Christ loves me. It's also my being included into the love of the Christ. For instance, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, I am accepted in the Beloved. That means I have been put into the one who is loved, the Son. So the Father is raining down love on the Son. And I've been teleported into the Son. I am in the love of the Father in the Son. I am in the love of the Christ. Jesus walked this earth full of the love of the Father. That meant he could carry the anointing, the Christ. The word Christ means anointed. The word Christ means the one who carries the authority. The word Christ means smeared, smeared with the Holy Spirit, clothed with the Holy Spirit. Because he knew he was a son. He is the son. He was the only begotten son. Now he's brought many sons and daughters to glory. Now I know the love of the Father. I've got the Spirit of God on me. Wow. I'm not ashamed. I'm not an orphan. Now catch this. It says to know the love of Christ with pathless knowledge. Now the word know. Try this one instead. The word know and the word knowledge in English are basically the same word. But in New Testament Greek they're very different words. The word know. Now. Lord, I pray revelation on this. Say, Lord, give me revelation. Lord, give me revelation. The word know means experiential knowledge. The word knowledge here means 
head knowledge. And it says, when the love of, when the knowledge, the experiential knowledge of the love of Christ surpasses, and that word surpasses means like, goes way beyond, way beyond natural knowledge, then you're filled with the full, with the fullness of God. Lord, I want to be filled with the Spirit. There you go, it tells you how. Now, we in our Western culture, I want to go for the things of God. So therefore, naturally, I'm taught by the culture to pursue this type of knowledge. I need to learn about the love of the Father. Right, find me some books. I'm sorry, you can only know the love of God this way. You can only know the love of God experientially, heart knowledge. That's what the word is saying. You can only know the love of God, heart knowledge. Jesus said in John 5, 39, he said the religious people... You search the scriptures, you study the Bible. You think you've got eternal life by studying the Bible, but you won't come to me and have life. It's heart knowledge. Heart experiential knowledge of the love of God has to, it, it, something has to click where it said, you know what, I'm letting go of this type of knowledge. Where did this type of knowledge come from? You know, there's a clue, there's an apple involved. It was a fruit. We don't know if it was an apple, it was fruit. This type of knowledge, we need to let go of it. But well, our world and our culture and the church prizes this knowledge above anything else. That's why we'll get somebody and they're gone for God and send them a cemetery full of this type of knowledge and they come out completely dead. Or well, somebody with this type of knowledge in the eyes of man is a fool. Well, I want to be in the eyes of God to you. Now catch this. I said to the Lord, what is it about knowledge? Why do human beings want knowledge? Think about it. So we can be in control. I mean, we need to be in control of some things. If you're going to drive a car, please be in control. I mean, if you go to, I've been to places in Africa where somebody's driving the car and you really does take faith. I'm sat in the back seat praying in tongues. But this type of, we need to be in control of some things and God has given us dominion but when it comes to relationship with God, he is your daddy. You are his child. You have to let go of all control. You trying to work up your faith with your formula is you trying to have some control because you're scared to let go of control because if you let go of control what might happen? You'll get free. Einstein said the definition of insanity, this is Einstein, he said the definition of being insane is continuing to do the same things and expect different results. We've been control freaks all of our lives. Knowledge is based on control. I want to be in control. You want to experience the love of the Father? Let go control. Let go of being in control. You're anxious about how the Father's going to meet your need. You've got some great need in your life and you're anxious about it. Well, the God kind of looks already planned in advance for how he's going to serve you, how he's going to love you and how he's going to deliver you. How's that going to come in your life? Is it because you're going to go home and sweat loads and study loads? It, with your head, with your head? No, you're going to let go of that. Let go of control. And it will come. God won't fail you. God won't fail you. Let go of control. To the Father's love. The love of the Father. I mean, this is a vast subject and I'm closing now. I just, basically, I, I don't think we understand the love of God. I don't think the church is. I don't think I do. Eh? Eh? I remember 25 years ago when I was brand new Christian uh, and living in Coventry. Anybody from Coventry? Best thing coming out of Coventry. 69. <laughs> God bless me in Coventry. I got something good out of Coventry. She's not from Coventry. There's the Lord. Oh, we were living in Coventry. I remember this man in the church there. And he was a very normal, regular guy. 
And some people were praying for me, and he just prayed, and he went, you have the authority of love. I'm 22 years old, I went, no! Something in me went, no! I want to move in power, miracles, healing. A little while later, and some brokenness and humility later. Thank you, Jesus. You can't understand. Some of us have got needs today. We all have needs. But by saying yes to the Father, hallelujah, this is funny. It's going to be like Jenga. When you say yes to the Father, he's going to go, right, he's going to take that little brick out. Yeah, it's okay, it's still standing. And he's going to take another one out. You think you're going to fall apart in a heap of rubble and ruin. But when the gender's gone, you're stood mature as his son and his daughter in the Father's love. And your life is looking very healed. Everything's full of life. It's flourishing. Some of your old friends don't really get you now. Some of your old friends who've known you maybe in church in the background, they won't get you. They'll think you've lost it. We knew somebody again in Coventry when he had an encounter with the love of the Father. Everybody at work thought, said, have you got a girlfriend? Because he's just walking around. With that, I'm in love feeling. This is better than the, I'm, as a man, I'm saying, I love my wife. This is better than the love of a woman. Love of God, it's so transforming. You're just gonna say yes to it today. Yes, to the love of the Father. Hallelujah. Even if that love touches somewhere on the inside of you where you're a scared little boy or a scared little girl, that love will drive out that fear, cast it out. This is supernatural. There's a place for counseling and talking things out, yes, but this is an encounter with the love of the Father because you can't figure it out. You encounter it, it's in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you feel dirty, unclean, unworthy, well, Jesus told a story illustrating the love of the Father, two sons. So if you feel like you're in a pigsty feeding pigs, you're a candidate for the love of the Father. Praise God. Father, we believe you, Lord. We're going to carry the presence of God and carry the glory of God because we're made mature in love. Miracles are going to break out so strong because you're mature in love. Mature in the love of the Father. Knowing exactly who you are. Knowing exactly where I come from, who I am and where I'm going with no self-doubt, no inferiority, no lack of identity. How awesome, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that this is a room of your sons, your daughters. Let's just acknowledge and appreciate his presence right now. Mm. Acknowledge and appreciate his presence. Father, Father, I want to experience your love. It's, I need a father. I need fatherhood in my life. Lift your hands there. We need fatherhood in your life. Fatherhood, the spirit of the father. The spirit of God is the spirit of adoption. Spirit of sonship. The spirit that gives you identity. That says you are mine. Hallelujah. Everything's coming alive. Good things. Hallelujah. Just stand without shame. No heads, no heads. I mean, it's good to bow your head in humility and holiness, but don't bow your head in shame. 
No, 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 that's not allowed. No, no, don't do that. Lift your head up. Lift your head up. Stand in the presence of the Father. Stand in the presence of the Father. Stand. You lift the hands. Stand as the men and the women and the young people stand before your Father. Hallelujah. Celebrate without guilt. Stand before your Father because of the blood of Jesus, without shame, without inferiority. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that this is how you demonstrate your love. You demonstrated your love. You didn't demonstrate it any other way. You didn't come and try to sell us something and demonstrate some shoddy product that doesn't work. You demonstrated your love by get by Christ dying for the ungodly that while we were a sinner, you, your kind of love is a love that's loving us now for what we need tomorrow and next week and the week after. And you want us to be dependent upon you. Thank you, Father. Let's break the shame of believing God. We're believing God for big things. Hallelujah. Big things. He's a oh, sir, He's the Father of lights. With him, there's no shadow or turning. Hallelujah. From your Father in heaven does not come a spirit of fear, comes a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. This love is supernatural love, it's supernatural. You can't figure it out. Natural love, you can understand it. Natural love, philosophers can write books about natural love. This type of love. It has to be demonstrated in Christ, but it has to be received in the Holy Spirit. There is adoption. The Spirit of God is saying, I am adopting you. I'm adopting you. There is an adoption that is happening. When God adopts you as his son, as his daughter, you don't become less of a... It's not like, well, you're the adopted kid. You're part of the family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say, thank you, Father. I am in your family now. I'm your son and daughter. I'm, you're my father. If there's anybody here who needs to get right with God, maybe you're not walking with him. You backslid away from him, even if you don't know him. This God loves you so much he'll give Jesus for you. So repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I know I am a sinner. Thank you for giving me your son Jesus to die on the cross. My death in my place. In my place. And that you, Father God, you, Father God by, the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, raised him up, raised him up from, the dead. from the dead. This day, this day I, confess I confess that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is my Lord, is my, Lord, is my, Lord, is my Savior. Is my Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Rejoice, 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 hallelujah. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Amazing things are coming your way. Amazing things are coming your way. Amazing things. Insecurity is leaving your life. Insecurity. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm delivering you from insecurity. The father's job is to make children insecure, to make a child secure. A father's Job in his job description is to put security into the into the soul of his child. He's your father. He's authoritative. There's times he'll correct you, and when he does, you feel Ooh. no condemnation. It makes you strong. It takes the feebleness and the insecurity out of you. Drags it out. He doesn't sympathize with fear. He casts it out of you. He casts it out. Does it belong in you? You're his child. He loves you. He forgets you. He's made you clean. Now that's insecurity. Leaves now. You need delivering from insecurity. Put your hand up. You need delivering. Be, don't be proud. Be humble. If you need delivering from insecurity, put your hand up.